Hey everyone, this is a quick video tutorial on my attempt to play uh, Ian's cover of Iron Maiden's Wasted Years, and uh, all credit to Ian for the arrangement and the way he structured these chords. I just basically copied what he did the best that I could see from his video. If you haven't seen his version, uh, please check it out in the, in the description below. Um, I love what he did with this song. It just brings so much heart to it. But in essence, as far as I think what he was playing is capo on the third fret, standard tuning. Uh, we're working around this A minor chord. It's actually technically an A minor shaped chord, which with the capo makes it a C minor. So C minor add nine creates this really pretty chord. And that ninth, that ninth is like the second, you know, in the scale of C minor, and that's what creates the tension on those two strings right there. If you play a regular A minor shape, you just get this sound, which is nice, but not quite as, I don't know, emotional as this one is. And then for the, the uh, G-shaped chord, which would be B flat technically with the capo, I just move these two fingers down. I'm gonna move the camera in here closer in a minute and show you guys what I tried to do. But this would be a B flat add four, I believe. I'm not a theory guy, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> Anyways, that's the basic structure. And then there's an F chord in here. And there's a C. Um, I believe that's it. Well, there's a G, but it's kind of a different kind of G. Anyways, um, basically throughout the whole song, you want to avoid playing the high E string. I don't even know if Ian ever hits it at all in his version. I may have hit it by accident, but so this whole chord and the sound of this A minor is really highlighted by that um, E flat note right there. And then the note below it is a D. So you get the D and the E flat. That's what creates the tension. But I never hit the high E. It just doesn't seem necessary. So anyways, I'll move the camera in and try to show you guys what I'm doing here. All right, so I thought I'd start by showing you the finger picking pattern. I apologize, I don't have two cameras or I'd try to get both parts at the same time. But if you can establish this finger picking pattern, it's the same thing all the way through the entire song on the first guitar. So basically, this is what it sounds like. I'll play it normal first. And it's pretty simple. I actually don't probably use proper technique. I use my thumb on the uh, A and the D string. And then I use my, let's see, middle finger and ring finger on the G and the B. And again, we never hit the high E at all. So it's this pattern. I'll try and play it slowly for you. One more time, a little slow. And then when it goes to the B flat. Okay, so for the left hand, um, obviously we're capo on the third fret, so I'll speak in the shapes of the chords from this point forward. So this would be A minor. We'll call it A minor, even though it's technically a C minor, just for simplicity's sake. And then you've got A minor, uh, there's a G, there's an F, and there's a C. Those are your primary chords in the song. But to begin with, this A minor, if you just play a regular A minor shape like this, and you take your, your ring finger and you were to slide it up two frets on the G string to right there. Now, I refinger it in that case so that it's actually my pinky finger that goes there, but maintain the first part of the A minor chord down below. So basically your ring finger has nowhere to go. It's just kind of floating. You get this A minor add nine and the add nine is this note up here that your pinky is hitting on the G string on the uh, seventh fret. So it sounds like this. And then when it goes to the G-shaped chord, I basically just move these two middle fingers up here and play the first couple notes that you'd play in a regular G while I maintain the pinky up here and the first finger down there below, just like in the A minor. So you get this kind of G add four type chord. Mm -hmm. 
And again, we're not playing the high E string at all so far. So the first two chords again to be like this, A minor add nine. And the next chord change we go to is an F, and that's where all the fingers move at once down to, I play an F chord in this case, since we're not playing the high E string, you don't need to bar this, those two. I just play this portion of the F chord, and I'm also not playing the low E string, so there's no need to bar the entire chord or even wrap your thumb around to that bottom note. So I just play the four middle strings here. And of course the C is just a regular C and that's easy to go to like this. So on the chorus, uh, when you go to the C, it's... So the chorus is playing C, F, and then this, this G is a little bit different. It's that kind of G add four chord again. It's basically, if you start with a C, a regular C, this is the easiest way I can think of to explain it. Regular C, take your two middle fingers here and just move them up to the low E and the A string. So again, from C, move these up. Keeping this first finger on the B string and your pinky finger goes nowhere. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's an add four chord. Again, not the theory guy here, but that's the sound you get. So on this on this bridge part that Ian came up with, and I just tried to copy it the best I could by watching him, is if you start with the A minor shape, just regular A minor, and again, don't hit the high E string. Um, start there. Every other slide up is just two fingers and two strings being pressed down and everything else stays open. So it's really not that complicated. If you start with the A minor, next chord you move to is this here, and it's basically, let's see, uh, D string is on the eighth fret, and G string you're pressing down on the seventh fret. So you get this. Okay, then you slide up. D string goes to 10th fret. G string goes to eighth fret. This nice, nice chord here. Sounds like the beginning of, uh, uh, what is that? That was pretty crappy, but <laughs> Call of Cthulhu, anyways. Okay, from there, you're gonna slide that same shape up two frets each finger, so D string goes to 12, G string goes to 10. slide, uh, D string goes up to 13, G string goes to 12. Next one, D string goes to 15, G string goes to 13. Then take that shape and slide it up two frets. So D string is on 17, G string is on 15. D string goes all the way up to 18, and G is on 17. That's a tough one to do if you don't have a cutaway down here, but that's the last chord that he goes to. So again, we start at the bottom, I'll just do a simple strum, A minor. And so the finger picking pattern I do here, this is the only part of the song where it just changes slightly. And I think the only difference is I hit the low A string twice in the little progression I do. So it's like, so I'm adding 
I'm adding that uh, low A string twice. Just kind of re-emphasizes that note all the way through as we walk up. So it would sound like this. That's the walk up that he does on the primary guitar. So on the second guitar, if you're interested, I just took the capo and moved it from third fret up to eighth fret. So up here on the eighth fret, rather than playing in the A minor shape or in, or in E minor, the E minor shape, which is the A minor chord below on the third fret, which is actually C minor, <laughs> for real. Anyways, so this E minor shape is what's important. So like on the chorus, on the last two choruses, I'm just playing very simple G, C, D, E minor chords along with the other guitar up here. So I'm going to like, uh, let's see. So second layer of guitar almost makes it sound like a 12 string when you've got two guitars in two different capo positions. So on the walk up here, it's a little bit different than the first guitar. Uh, but again, it only uses, this time only uses two strings that you're pressing on all the way up, if that helps. And primarily we're just focused on the bottom four strings. So E, A, D, and G. You don't really need to hit the top, the B and the E at all. So I start in sequence with the first guitar when he starts, when I start on the A minor shape below, I'm starting on the E minor up here, so I'm going. Just a regular E minor. Second chord I go to is this E minor add nine, which just takes the, um, the finger that's on the uh, D string and slides it up to the 12th fret. So it's A string is on 10th, uh, D is on 12. You get this really cool chord. And then it goes, next chord actually goes back to the regular E minor. Then the next chord, it takes that E minor add nine shape. It's almost the same except that your first finger that's down here on the 10th fret of the A string goes up to the 13th fret. So I kind of use different fingers, I swap it around. So you got A string 13, D string 12, you get this. from there, it's uh, A string goes to 15, D string goes to 13. Take that shape, slide it up two frets. So you got A string on 17, D string on 15. And then A string goes to 18, D string goes to 17. This one, this last chord is kind of tricky. You're gonna basically have both fingers on the 18th fret. So A string is 18, D string is 18. I just add my pinky finger there basically and go. So together it would be like this. G for the chorus. So those together, and on this guitar, on the higher position guitar, I just did down strokes all the way through. So no strumming, no finger picking. I hope that helps you. Uh, I love the song. I love what Ian did with it. Please check out his version and um, have a great day.
coast of gold, across the seven seas.